Right. Good. The problem. The problem with cheat meals. <laughs> I like to say the title at the beginning because then everybody knows what we're talking about, and then we can get all the chit chat out of the way after that. How are you? <laughs> I actually know Megan's not feeling great, so if she doesn't interject as much this time. That's why. It's not because I scold her for talking too much. <laughs> I'm gonna be extra snarky today. Should I lower myself? You should, yeah. Boom. On this one, we're we're live on Facebook and Instagram, and so getting the camera angle. Anyway, tech stuff. Let Bye. me tell you guys something. This one's going to be drinking from a fire hose. So it's really, there's a lot of information and Megan doesn't even know what I'm gonna talk about, which I kind of like because then you can interject. And then sometimes I don't like it because then you say, say stuff that I'm gonna say later, but that's okay. I kind of want to just go right into it though, because there really is a lot. Yeah, so we're all, except him, don't know what he's about to say. We're gonna talk about cheat meals. We're gonna talk about cheat days. So Problem. I kind of already know what he's gonna say. If well, we'll see, we'll see. I'll be. You let me know through, throughout this if there's anything that's like, huh? I didn't realize that. Should I ring a bell? Ding ding. Okay. So, just right before I'm getting into it here, this is a blog that I've written. If you'd rather read it, you let us know. We'll send you the link for that. Um, but we're gonna read through it and also just you know talk a little bit more in detail about everything that's in it. So that's it, getting into it. If we're being honest, I feel like probably all of us want cheat meals or even cheat days to be a good idea. Just a break from the monotony. I'm also curious whether more people do cheat meals or cheat days. Ooh, that's a good question. So, Let us know if you're watching this um, live or later. Days but, or meals. But here's the thing, and when you're in a calorie deficit, trying to lose weight, you're hungry, there is nothing that's quite as exciting as the thought of just eating whatever you want and filling your belly. Yeah. Especially if it's going to boost your metabolism so that you can keep losing weight without hitting a plateau because that's something that people say cheat meals and cheat days do. Mm. Spoiler alert, <laughs> uh, it's not as good of an idea as it sounds. So more often than not, this strategy of cheat days is going to lead you right back to weight gain. I'm going to explain why. But I'm not just going to leave you hanging. This isn't just a, you know, don't do this kind of thing. I'm going to give you an alternative and show you what you can do that still will give you that break that you need from your diet without destroying your progress or having any other negative consequences. So first I want to talk about the truth about any weight loss diet. There's a simple truth. First, by, before I even say what it is, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you if I were on death row, I'm sure I was wrongly or convicted, you know, it was, I'm innocent, but it's too late. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> Another video discussion. My, <laughs> my last request, food request, would be sushi and chocolate chip cookies. Which, not a surprise. I, yeah, it's not like a, it's a classic combination, but they're my favorite foods, so I don't care. I, and if I were to do cheat days, those would be things that are on my regular rotation on those days too. But here's the thing. I don't do cheat days and those foods are on my regular rotation. In fact, I'm in the middle of a weight loss phase right now and yesterday, well I guess it was a couple of days ago now, but we had cookies during a family game night. So it's something that we do regularly and we have them often enough that our 11 year old son makes these cookies from scratch all on his own. He's got the recipe memorized. So yeah, so it's something that we have fairly often whether I'm losing weight or not. Um, I don't want to give the wrong impression. Like I definitely eat them a little bit less frequently when I'm losing weight, uh, but it's it's never a matter of restriction versus yeah. no restriction. And you don't go all out like you used to. That's true. I used to just have a ton of cookies, and now whether I'm doing weight loss or not, I have roughly the same amount, like four to six cookies. Instead of like twelve. Yeah. <laughs> so, so okay. Um, the, and this is, this is the simple truth about any good weight loss diet that you need to know. It should not be all that different from how you normally eat. So the more different a diet is from your real life eating habits, the less likely it is to work. Or if it does work, the results aren't going to be as likely to stick. On the other hand, the more similar your weight loss approach is to how you eat just on a normal day-to-day -day basis, that's when you'll finally be able to get to a healthy weight and have an easier time staying there. And you can do it without feeling like you're in a constant battle to eat better. 
cheat meals are the antithesis of that mindset, mm. which is why they aren't a good idea. So let's take a closer look at three big problems with cheating. One, it can undo all your hard work. Weight loss comes down to energy balance. You can't lose weight if you eat more calories than you're burning through being active. And that is an ongoing thing. It doesn't reset every morning. So you can be in a calorie deficit Monday through Friday, but if you go completely off the rails on the weekend, in those two days, you can 100% undo the deficit that you maintained for those other five days. And, and that's actually pretty easy to do. It happens a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it, can happen, it can happen because when your calorie deficit is too extreme, then on the weekends, you binge, you eat an entire pizza and a pint of ice cream. Yeah, exactly. Or it can be actually that your deficit during the week or is too small. And all it takes is just a little bit to offset your progress um, on, you know, on Saturday and Sunday. You, you, might, you might not even notice that you did anything different on those days. And you can start to wonder if maybe something's wrong with you because I'm doing well most of the time. On the weekends, I only do a little bit. So either way, it's a delicate balance. And cheat meals make it more difficult to get it right. Problem number two, it creates an all or nothing mentality. If you've ever felt like you can get great results with a particular diet, but then something came up, life got busy, you had to stop, you are officially a victim of pop culture, fitness, and nutrition programs. And I use the word victim intentionally. So you are constantly being sold, advertisements popping up everywhere saying things like, all you have to do is cut out carbs so your body can use fat for fuel, which is, which is, one thing. well, this one thing. but that's a specific popular one, that's, <coughs> key, that's keto, or yeah, another example would be these next 75 days are going to be super intense, but it's going to build up all the mental toughness you need to make a change which is 75 hard, another popular one. There's always popular, or like you said, it can be just any like follow this tough diet. Um, and that's, it's not anything like how you normally eat, but all you gotta do then is have these cheat days and it's gonna boost your metabolism and then you're not gonna hit a plateau. So lots of different examples of this. Even if these things get you or someone you know really great results for a while, they are not realistic for a long-term mindset. So there will be times when you're all in and there will be times when it's literally not possible for you to do them at all, which is why cheat meals often become cheat days, which become cheat weeks, become cheat months, and ultimately yeah. become, I don't even know what I'm cheating on anymore. I had one call it, client call it a slippery slope. Like you just, once you start having like one thing, it just turns into the next thing and the next thing, and it's just hard to get out of. Yep, and the point is it's not your fault then when you fall off the wagon. The all or nothing mentality is literally built in to these popular diets and systems. So that's problem number two. Problem three is that it perpetuates the idea of good and bad foods. The this, I this is probably my number one reason why I don't like them. Yeah, it's a big one. Okay. The idea of cheating on a diet implies there are certain things that you're allowed to eat and certain things that you aren't. And this is not something that's new. Labeling foods as inherently good or bad is a concept that gets reused with every new trend in dieting. Mm -hmm. The list of the foods that are good and bad get changed and the diet gets a, a new name, but foundationally it's always the same thing. And it is a major contributor to disordered eating. That is a well-known fact among people who know, not well known by, by uh, anyone necessarily outside of this industry, but good or bad foods can lead to disordered eating. If you're unfamiliar with the term <clears throat> disordered eating, basically it's a set of behaviors that can lead to health concerns, such as actual eating disorders like anorexia or bulimia, um, all the way to, it can lead to obesity, it can lead to bone loss, anxiety, depression, and a lot more. Even, even the idea that oh, I ate this candy bar, now I need to burn it off, or I need yep. to earn this food is a thought of disordered eating. Yep. And unfortunately, thanks to popular dieting strategies, including but definitely not limited to cheat meals, it's actually very common um, to that women in particular experience disordered eating. In fact, around 75% of women are have symptoms of disordered eating and, and a lot of times they don't know it because it just sounds like 
these yeah. trendy diets. And that's diet culture for you. It's not your fault. It's culture <laughs> and everything that's being bombarded at you. Yeah. Um, if you want to answer this question since it's part of this. Sure. Um, this section that we're in. So Alita wants to know, what do you call sweets at your house, particularly when talking to your kids, which is such a timely question. Talking about good and bad food. So we yeah. definitely don't call them bad foods. We don't view... Junk. We don't say junk food. Yeah. Um, we, we don't... Sometimes we'll say healthy or unhealthy, but the, I try to even stay away from that language. Yeah. More often, we talk about it as treats. We call it what it is. Treats, candy, sweets. Um, you know, and, and we make it fun too. But I think what I really like is... You know, if they do want a piece of candy or or they had that piece of candy, I'm like, okay, well now we can find something more nutritious. Or if that's a little less nutritious of a choice, maybe we can find something with a little bit more nutrition. And that that is backed up with lots of conversations about learning what is and it is not as good for your body or not. So we don't we try not to make that good or bad. Yeah, I was gonna say that's the important thing is that we have this foundation already built up with our kids where they understand nutrients. They understand that all foods have things in them that our body uses for energy for various things to make us stronger, faster, all of that. Um, and so we will talk about treats like this is a treat because it's got, yeah, it has some nutrients in it that our body does need. It's got a lot of this, this has a lot of carbs in it and that's okay. But if we have too much of that, then we're not getting enough of the other things that our body needs. And so it more is about having a foundation of understanding food and nutrients in general so that you can understand that it's perfectly fine to have treats, but they're called a treat because you don't have them as often as you have these other things that have more nutrients in them. Mm -hmm. Some, one more. Yep. Some, some parents I've seen use it like a sometimes food too. There's another like language thing. Whatever makes sense for your kids. Uh, whatever it falls naturally, but I think the bigger piece is just those continual education conversations instead of oh that's junk food you can't have that and you know that's that's our go to response so yeah which is not helpful because it doesn't teach kids anything to just say oh that's bad for you yeah that's what I always come back to is is it really bad for you like drinking motor oil is bad for you <laughs> or is it just something that doesn't particularly give you a whole lot of nutrients and if you have too much of it you're gonna be missing out on other things so okay so the alternative to cheat meals or cheat days i have painted a pretty bleak picture of the cheat meals which i stand behind however sometimes the best strategy is to take a break from a weight loss diet to enjoy more food mm -hmm. so to do a diet break correctly so that it doesn't just become cheat meals under a different name you have to understand two things one is maintenance the only way to take a break and guarantee you won't destroy your weight loss progress is to have a clear understanding of how much you can eat without gaining or losing weight. And it's not a fixed number, it's a range. Some people can cut out 500 calories per day and not lose any weight because they're still within their maintenance range. While others, though not as many people, but others can eat an additional 500 calories per day and still not gain weight. Everyone's maintenance is in a range somewhere. If you want to take a diet break and you don't know your maintenance range, the important thing is to carefully track what you eat and then watch how your weight responds to that. Your weight will absolutely not be the same from day to day, so you have to look for the average over the course of at least two to four weeks. Um, and just as a side note, we don't track calories at all with our clients, so we can tell you more about that if you're interested. But that just gives you a basic <laughs> idea. You have to understand maintenance to do diet breaks correctly. The other thing you have to understand, yeah. This is, this maintenance piece is one I'm of I'm going to talk more about Okay, it. never mind. Hold on. Yeah, we'll come, we're going to come more, more back to that. The second thing you have to understand is balance. So if you, if you were to stay on a weight loss diet, all the time, every day of the week, without ever taking a break, you would always be losing weight. The downside to this is <coughs> it makes life really difficult. It can become unhealthy if your diet's 
really intense. And it simply just isn't practical when considering real life situations like birthdays, holidays, vacations, things like that. On the other hand, if you only do weight loss dieting one day out of the week, and then you stay at maintenance for the other six days of the week, and as long as it's true maintenance, you're not ever overeating, then you would still technically lose weight just from that one day per week, but it would take forever to see any results. But the point is, the more you stay in maintenance, the slower the progress will be, and the more you stay in weight loss, the more headache it's going to be, and potentially you'll have more opportunity to sabotage your progress then. So you wanna find a balance. <laughs> Told you she was not feeling well. So um, the point thing is you want to find a balance that works for you. So now we're going to talk, now that we understand those two things better, maintenance and balance, we're going to talk about how to actually do diet breaks. And I'm going to give you some guidelines that'll make it uh, work for you. So there are two factors to consider. Number one is how big of a break are you going to take? So if you have a solid grasp on how much to eat for true maintenance, then I recommend eating that full amount whenever you take a diet break. Give yourself a true break, don't just do a little bit. But if you don't have maintenance already dialed in, then you're better off taking a more conservative approach. So eat more than you are for weight loss, but leave yourself some headroom so that you're not accidentally overeating during your, work, your break, since you don't know exactly where that range is. So that's that's one aspect. And then the other thing is how long of a break are you going to take? So I suggest either taking regular diet breaks for just a couple days at a time. Just for example, that's what I'm doing right now is I'm taking a diet break every weekend. Saturday and Sunday are my breaks. And then I'm doing a weight loss diet Monday through Friday. Um, so either do that or you can plan extended breaks that are at least a couple weeks long, if not even months. And that would be more for during a weight, a longer weight loss journey. So there isn't a certain amount of time that you have to do a diet break, but the longer that you go without a break, then the longer your break should be when you do take one. Either way, it should definitely be predetermined as much as possible. For sure. Um, but, but be flexible. So if something comes up and it makes more sense to shift your schedule and say, okay, no, I need to take this break sooner, or no, it would make more sense if I wait a couple of weeks and then start it, that's fine but have it planned. So that's kind of the basic idea of how to do it. I do want to cover a question because I feel like there could be a lot of people still wondering, okay, is the whole reason for cheat meals or diet breaks, either one, is it that they supposedly boost your metabolism? Because that is definitely a big selling point, but it's, it's very misleading. So anytime you increase the amount of food you, you eat, whether it be through a diet break or a cheat meal, you have the potential to reach a higher point in your maintenance range, like we talked about earlier. So in some ways, this does mean that your metabolism speeds up as your body adapts to more eating. Um, but the reason it's misleading is because once you drop back down into weight loss, again, while well, weight loss diet, your body's really just going to adapt again and slow your metabolism back down. So there may be some temporary metabolic advantage to a diet break, but it's, first of all, it's debatable whether there is or not. Mm -hmm. Secondly, it's going to be very individual. It's going to be based on you and your context and what you've been doing and all of that. But either way, the amount that it affects your metabolism isn't significant enough to justify doing it just on that reason alone. There is a bigger reason to do a diet break specifically, which is that it's an opportunity to recover from the physical and the mental toll of being in a calorie deficit. So no matter how well your diet's going, you feel great, you're seeing good progress, think of a diet break as preventive maintenance. So if you just try to stick with weight loss for months and months on end, eventually you are going to burn out. An occasional diet break may feel like it's delaying progress, but it's really just giving you a better chance of actually reaching your goal. Mm -hmm. That's really hard for people to believe and walk there. Yeah, <clears throat> which kind of brings us to this next thing, which is what you were bringing up earlier. There's one more benefit to diet breaks. So one of the biggest weight loss mistakes you can make 
is to pay attention to your diet when you're trying to lose weight, but then not pay attention or even just downright ignore your food choices during maintenance. And that pretty much sums up the mentality behind cheat meals and well, cheat days. Well, that's pretty normal. I mean, yep. you're not working on a specific goal and so you just are not as intentional. Yeah. Diet breaks, on the other hand, they rely heavily on <coughs> intentionally practicing maintenance and finding a realistic balance that fits your life, which is totally the opposite of a cheating mindset. Mm. Remember, if you want healthy eating to become something that's more second nature to you, so you don't have to think about it all the time, then your diet, even during weight loss, needs to be something that you can use forever. <coughs> diet breaks are just one tool for finding your forever plan, which is what you were bringing up earlier about maintenance, is that that's not something people work on, but honestly, it is one of the most important things that you can do to have long-term success. It's learning how to keep your habits and your success without going back into your old habits and and just finding that rhythm and that balance maintenance calories that work for you. So, and that's hard to do because you know how to eat before your diet and you know how to diet, but do you know how to eat for maintenance and, and maintain those? And, Unless you're really intentional, you have to learn how to do it. Just like you have to learn how to diet. Yep. And if that's something you want help with and you would like guaranteed results or your money back, literally, <laughs> then apply for our coaching. We would love to help you with that. We can show you how to do this. We can help you figure out your maintenance range. We can help you decide whether diet breaks are a needed plan for how long, how much. We just get rid of all the questions and we'll help you and tell you what, what you need to do or or you know, give you options so that you can decide what's gonna work best for you. Yeah. If you have any questions, leave a comment or send us a message. We will definitely answer you. Um, otherwise, that's it. I know that was a lot of information, so I'm happy to clarify anything if it was at all confusing. Yeah. Or if you prefer to read it or you know, kind of review what we said, we can send you the link too. All right. Sounds good. We'll Bye. see you next time.